All right, in today's video, I'm going to be checking out the rear brake shoes. So they're on a drum brake and it's the rear brake shoes I'm going to be looking at to see if I need to replace them. I have a set of replacement brake shoes. Block of wood and I'm going underneath the spring mount in the rear rear wheel arm yeah. right with the road wheel off check the condition of the spring and the strut of course do it to both sides just have a little look around for leaks the spring looks okay and intact if it was the struts were faulty they'll be leaking liquid we should not check the tires look at that there's a white mark there and a big stone embedded just take the time to get rid of something like that go all the way around you screwdriver dig them out in the end I opted for the triangular track stand a piece of wood with the grain going against the longitude direction of the car so it's not going to chop it in half one of the accessory tools you'll need is M8 bolts alright so because on some vehicles luckily on this one I've got two bolt holes here M8s fit in there and I keep them in my toolbox you could if you want give it a little whack uh, just to loosen it so I am in gear first gear and uh, forgot to take the handbrake off so let's take the handbrake off because this first job is just checking right if those if those uh, brake shoes are absolutely perfect don't need to change it the first gear handbrake off it's liable to roll forward not backwards this time so but it's it's um it's not hardly on any of us like to, uh, at the moment and it's on stands so on stands it shouldn't roll unless it's on a slope like I was okay so these are I've got 13 head M8 bolts and luckily I've got two holes you can give that a little bit of whack just feel that tiny little noise so they're barely touching so this is what I aim for if I do change I do change the brake shoes, that's what I'm aiming for. They're not really opposite each other, which is kind of weird. I thought they might be. Okay, stuck a bit now. Even it out. Time for a bit of a sidebar. top it needs a bit of a pry so they're offset they're more at the bottom of the bolts and the top is gonna am I gonna be lucky is there gonna be no lip am I gonna be lucky who knows who knows a wiggle all right all right so again hardly any lip that's why it was easy to take off if there's any kind of real lip i mean it wasn't really, really that easy as i did it. it it was a twang where the where the brake shoes hit the springs and uh, so i can't feel anything i'm just going to clean the area down with brake cleaner uh make sure i've got my dust mask i'll even put a bit of paint on these things here If you do that, they've removed any kind of trace of any grease 
and may have been behind the shoes. So it looks like I've already um, the left side marked the towards the front, spring towards the front or the top. So up and towards the front. So a good time to take a picture. Take a moment just to have a little look at it, to work out what's going on. Here, I have that cable, and it's going to be pulling on this, this lever here. So that. There's the handbrake cable and on that lever there. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep that metal part. I know that does come with a new uh, shoe. Let me I'll have a look at it in a minute. First job, I'm gonna take that one off and that one off. And I've tied if you've got ribbon, use a ribbon. I've tied uh PTFE tape so if it flies off hopefully I'll be able to find it. So this larger springs at the top and the smallest spring is at the bottom the smallest is here on the side and just make a note of where these things are hooked like I said, that's showing so I'll put a white bit of paint there that's showing that so that's coming out of there uh, that's not showing that's not showing so I have a mental kind of note that's in and that is in that hole so take a picture of these holes and point to them. So the top spring, because you, you know you may end up with these loads of holes there, look, there's another one there. So it's not, it's in that one there. Okay, so take a picture and that one. These Paget brake shoes. before. So it's been months since I had that last look at it, that's why I'm kind of reminding myself I think I probably would have Yep, I've already kind of put the paint on everything. Just doing mind myself, so I want left side, left side. Obvious things don't crease up the contact surfaces. Does that look the same? And these, of course, are called dowel pins. They're not exactly like dowel pins, so someone just got something rolled up some steel steel springs stuck it in the holes they sit in there yep that's all there they look very similar yep goes in like that and the top of it has got less kind of padding than the bottom of it on both sides yeah. all right okay Get that off. If you feel any kind of spring tension if I do, make sure you get eye protection on these threads. Okay, let's do the logical thing. Let's stop yourself from smacking it with a screwdriver. I'm wearing the thread out, so. Can. 
these are anti rust bolts. Work quite well, they haven't rusted at all in a couple of years. Right. they might fly away let's put some ribbon on them as well yeah I much prefer these pins will actually kind of fall away once these come off so you've got to keep hold of them as well and I think they're attached to the back so they might just fall away it looks like it's a push and pull push in these two and then pull, I think. I'm not sure. Awkward. Much easier with it. Much, much easier with it. This breaks. I don't know. I tell you what, in the past, these used to be a lot more difficult. A lot more difficult. Oh my god, that just came straight off like that. Yeah. These used to be so much more difficult to handle. You kid you not. I always work just doing one side at a time, isn't it? Well, that pin, I'll show you what it is. Don't want to forget that thing. It's just sitting right here. There is. Remember it went in that big slot there. So what kind of pin is it? Just sits at the back. Like so. That hole there. Put everything in a box. Okay. Look at that, it's all wobbly. Things look like they want to fly off already. Makes you want to release the spring tension, doesn't it? It sure does. And this, obviously, was sat on top of there. With that undone, it makes sense to release the spring tension, I think. Until it looks like that, I'm just trying to spring tension out. Make sure that we can fit that back on, so I'm not putting any any extra force of that pushing on the rubber. I'm just going to test it out. It'll be not not doable, probably. That's really tough. Okay, I'm just going to leave that there like that. I might just leave that. Oh no, that's going to fly off. Okay, okay. So officially, <coughs> next thing, I have to take this off. I don't know what it's going to look like. Just looks really iffy, doesn't it, with all that spring tension on it? No. Uh, well, as soon as I took that off, uh, and they are identical, left and right. And the pins are identical. Yep, they are. Cleaner ones on that side. Ooh, the spring tension went out a bit. There is no spring tension now, look. It just kind of flopped forward. So I guess you're going to have to 
job is to add the spring on, all the springs on, and then kind of fit it on. You know, you thought it'd be logical to fit the thing on, then put the springs on. But I don't think so. I don't think you'll ever be able to get the strength and the leverage to put it in, even in one of these tools. So that comes off. So that should be a lot looser. do with hooking it on, make sure it doesn't fly off. Most of this bring by most of the spring tension is off. The wedge it on. And the wedging point. Do that bit. Underneath? Pop it underneath. Oh there we go. There, that's the that's the bit you want. Now that there's that. Change the springs if you you need to. That just, okay, that came off that side first. Bottom one, the box. If I take the tension off, this is you know, going flying off. That is a lot of tension on there. To do the next thing, kind of almost lifting it out. Just really weary about all these little parts. Let's take it to your local garage. That comes off like that. That relieves the tension, not really. Ah, okay, pull that out. That looks like that. Take uh, that spring operated. That's a spring pushing on that. Okay. Right, work out and take that off. Must be a tool or something. The spring they go flying off. Okay, you see me doing this as I'm doing it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It all comes off like that. Time to take the other springs off. This one just about is doable now. No. Behind. See that? What came in handy? Get from behind. Let's hook from behind. 
there's my paint to show the front and the top of it look how similar these two are but they've got the paint on the top and the ribbon as well that one comes off like that after the fork is taken out just sits in that groove there see that this comes off like that all right didn't want it to fall away or fall out like that but luckily i kept on doing it there's some washers there this is awkward that sat have I lost anything? Don't know where that was. Kept my finger on it. I have to look back at the photographs. Yeah, that came off like that, it's not even a screw. Nothing else. I thought it would screw into something. That bulgy bit out to the side like that. It doesn't come off. It does come off. Flat end towards the front. Comes off like that. There's a little tiny groove in it. I see. in there like that Pretty sure it came and went in like that. Okay. This video has got to be putting it back together again because it is awkward. Don't let anyone tell you it's easy. And if anyone can do this brake job for a few quid, I'll be very surprised. If this brake I can do what, a couple of minutes with this. This is completely different. Let me just check. This one's felt. And on the other side, before I run this side, I will have a look just to double check. There's nothing left behind, nothing extra I need. Just goes up like that. So, hold the thing like that and break the cable in last. And wedge it in, there's a spring, a spring tension there. Alright, it's the old one. And old one. Right. Oh, that's easy. Look. That's no problem at all. Right, okay. Give her a bit of a clean down where it touches, mating surfaces. Here, 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 here. Uh, a little bit of anti seize on it. I think that would help.
got some special grease I can, I can almost see it amongst the rust and these I don't know what it is some special pro grease silicon probably silicon based half, half gone of course after all this time ok they've got little grooves in there just to put extra dollops on it sits in there I think On. Working on a slope is not good for your back. It feels really horrible. Right. The left side. Double check. That's that fella. Not a lot in it, but probably enough to make a difference. And right side. Left side. Okay. This one first goes in first. You can always pull that back with your hands, which you can't. Something like that. Okay. It makes sense to me that it makes sense to me that when it's old, the ratchet system will ratchet the brakes that way. So when it's new, I think this went, this goes to the rear. It sits in there, and it's and, and this plate here stops helps the ratchet system. But it makes sense to me though when it's new, like, like on a, a disc brake, to wind it in a little bit. I'm not going to do it too much. I would have thought that would help. I mean, I can wind it in all the way if I want. Whenever I, yeah, you because know, I'm working on slow, when I lower, I lower the car, I remember I have no handbrakes. I just got to remember that. So I'm winding in two winds. And I'll stick that back on. And it's symmetrical. I'm like that now. Mechanism first, or what? Okay, it came off. That goes in there. Oh, that hits against. Is it like that? Awkward. It's much easier laying it down flat. Cardboard below there uh, to catch things at full. Pretty sure it was like that. Okay. 
This is awkward. Well, I'll work it out and I'll show Because it all came off together, didn't it? Let's try putting it back. Here, out of here. And put a bit of spring tension on. Especially a big spring. Hello. 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 It's this thing that's awkward. If I can get some tension onto that thing there, you know, I'll need this one there as well. That's the magic. Right just have a little look at something. Using the other side as reference, see how quickly your memory fades. And then photographs are coming handy. So that fork sits on top of both of them. Like that. There we go, like that. And that thing does face the rear, that kind of bracket thing faces the rear. So remember it came off just like that and then I'm going to fit this thing on. This thing sits inside the fork area. Okay, so that's on there like that. Okay, yeah, it sits inside the fork. Shit. Well, ping, it drops. That edge there sits behind the fork. That hole there sits in that bottom one. And the spring tension from that little, have a little raspy spring for the ratchet, it's going to help. Went in there earlier, didn't it? That problem. Okay. There it is. Sits in like that. Ratchet sits in like that. I need the other spring. Uh, remember it went in backwards, the top of the spring has got the white paint on it. So it went in like that. And this one goes in like we need that hook again. Easy, isn't it, earlier? No tension at all. Wrong angle, probably. Right. 
intention by push. There we go. It's under a bit of tension. That's behind there, that's in there, that's backwards. You can pull me out that way, I mean. That's in that hole, that's in that hole. So I'm kind of getting somewhere. Hit that like button if you've not really done it. I'm going to do these things. I'll make my mistakes. And hopefully I'm not making a mistake here. So this is where I was before, wasn't I? And it was kind of, I was trying to take it off. The cable's in there. New brake pads and put the old one back on. So the job is careful about these pistons. Sit that behind there. You kind of almost want it, they do want to sit in there. That's better. That's better. That's much better, right? I was worried when I was taking taking the hub off earlier that I might snap the end of these. So that is one worry. You could you could accidentally snap it off if it's rusty. So saying that, why am I not doing something about it? The ends of these could do so many C's, which is quite a good any rust paint. Any rust rubbing as a whole. Okay. It is that one down there. One well, looks like a little cave. And I just noticed when I did this, keep it in eye on it, and I squashed these two calipers together, it slotted in. sits in there. I'm running out of camera battery. Bit cool time. Is there an angle that I need? this side first. Left side first, then right side. Okay, look. It's there, I've only got a minute or two to supply. Battery there, so it all, it all, it's all there, all the springs are there. Now, comes the job of trying to Maneuvering. Make sure you're not pushing on the piston because that's going to, if you push that side, that's going to side you and come off. So, here's my pin. the bottom one. Make sure it's not forgetting to do that. Been trying to fall out. Push that in there. In the bottom, that look on the bottom, it's kind of on the top, meeting it. Push these fillers down. And the way to get that pin is 
in there, that's not fully seated yet. Squash that down with the pliers, I mean push that down, push that in I mean, and then have the pin above it and then drop the pin in. That's the way to do it. Okay, and it, and it did ping, luckily I had this dangling there, so don't forget to do that. All right, so I've got a last bit of battery, so I'm gonna run this all the way down. I've put, levered that onto the metal bar. Now, look at the ratchet, it's not in the right place. However, I know everything else is. So I'm gonna make sure that ratchet is in the right place later on. So, okay, that's better. So if I've run out of power, please hit that like and subscribe button. And that, all I need to do is to, oh, I can almost pull it with my hand. Oh, okay, that was all right, wasn't it? Didn't even need any leverage. Pulled it, pullable, okay. Probably because I, ah, I screwed the screw in, didn't I? Of course, I screwed the screw in, so it's easier. Remember that little screw down there on the, on the fork? So, after you've retracted the fork into the housing and the brake shoe has been retracted, you need to you'll need to put the hub, the drum, back on, and then to make sure that there is no resistance at all. So basically, it should spin freely. If you notice, if you hear a sound as you as you rotate the drum and there's a scraping sound, or if you feel resistance, that's not right. So even without the wheel on, you should be able to turn it freely. Now that's just one point because you do run the risk of if you've got contact between the brake shoe and the brake drum uh, when you're running, you do have a uh, risk. You do run a risk of overheating it, and causing a fire, bursting your tire in the middle of the road, and you haven't noticed. It's heated up so much it's burst the tire. And you see in this picture, you, you know the the um, the uh, piston above. Uh, that that that's just rubber, and that would that could burst as well. And of course, the worst thing is if your tire burst in the middle of the road. Right. So, so the best best thing, the way to do it, is to allow the ratchet system to do its work. Make sure. See where my little um, hook is pointing to. Make sure that 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 ratchet holder when it sits on the toothed cog sits there firmly before you close up the brake drum so that it's not you it's, it's catching it it's not letting it slip okay that's one thing uh, run the little car uh, good few hundred meters stop feel it see feel for any heat run obviously operate the um, handbrake cable if you don't remember you have no handbrake at this moment so it should be done on flat ground right so run after you've operated the handbrake cable maybe uh, handbrake uh, lever or parking brake lever maybe 50 times say at least to ratchet to, to bring the shoe back towards the drum um, run your car 100 meters feel for heat run your car Another and feel for obviously the effectiveness of the um, the handbrake, the parking brake. Run your car another mile, make sure there's no heat, both sides of course. Run it another five miles, no gets also when there is load at the back of your car that changes the way your rear brakes operate. The more load there is, the more rear brakes come in. So Load your load your car with something. Maybe you have someone sitting in the back. Run it another few miles. Feel for heat. So if you if your ratchet system is operating properly, and if you just left it that, it should be fine. It should ratchet up in the right in the nice space, and you, you should be able to pull your handbrake, and it will stop you on the hill, uphill or downhill. However, if you do find that your handbrake cable is very loose after several tens of miles and it is still you're still not really stopping on the hill if you really 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 want to I highly advise you don't do this but if you really really want to where that where my little um, 
hook is pointing to that that gear that toothed gear if you wanted to bring the shoe outwards just a fraction go use a little electronic screwdriver or use even something like the hook I've got there and then bring move the cog on the side don't worry about left hand right hand thread move the tooth cog in a way it can naturally go so don't go against the ratchet leave the ratchet as it is that metal ratchet and move the cog just one tooth only remember that one tooth only in the direction of um, in the direction that it can freely go so be warned don't move it any more than that because you do run the risk of, and of course retest retest for heat retest for heat you can easily overcook the uh, drum brakes uh, so that's why I don't really like them but I've got them but they're, they're quite good on my, my car and I use them anyway good luck remember don't move that don't move that tooth cog if you really really had to bring out the handbrake just it gripped a bit more not more than one tooth be warned thanks for watching